First Chronicles chapter 7. Now the sons of Issachar, that is the son of Leah, Genesis 30 verse 18, means higher. And you go back in Genesis 30 and read what the means of these, why and how they named these sons would be a great story to tell them later between Rachel and Leah. Now the sons of Issachar were Tola, Hua, Jeshub, and Shimron. Four. The sons of Tola, Uzai, Rephaiah, Jerio, Jemiah, Jemian, and Shemiel, heads of their father's house, to wit, of Tola, they were valiant men. Now this is important, this chapter. They are valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was the days of David, and when David had that census, Two and twenty thousand and six hundred. And these would be warriors, men, great battle. And the sons of Uzai, Israiah, and the sons of Israiah, Michael, and Obadiah. Now, Obadiah is a, is a well known used name in the Bible. It's not the Obadiah the prophet. And Joel, again, not the, jo the Joel of the book. Ishaliah, five, and all of them chief men. So one thing Ezekiel does, he produces warriors and men of authority. And when and with them, by their generations, after the house of their fathers, were bands of soldiers for war. Six and thirty thousand men. And they had many wives and sons. So he spreads forth warrior and has many and their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might, reckoned in all their genealogies, fourscore and seven thousand. Now all their genealogy, that would be the family of Issachar itself. So when we say valiant men, when we say men of known, particularly, especially of Issachar, give that repetition to Issachar. In verse 6, the sons of Benjamin, this would be of Rachel, and when she died in giving birth to Benjamin, Genesis 35, verses 16 through 18. Benjamin means son of the right hand. And he's given the name Benoni, but Jacob, Israel, renames him, changes his name to son of the right hand. And again, see that Ben, that means son in, the, in Jewish, Hebrew language and the sons of oh wait a minute, i didn't read and the sons of benjamin bila and beecher and jediel three and the sons of bila esbon and uzai and uziel uzai and then you get uziel look at that el that's jehovah that's god and jeremiah and iri Five, heads of the house of their father. So here's a group of people. They're, they're in charge. Mighty men of valor. That's, that's one thing that's running through chapter 7. And we're reckoned by their genealogies 20 and 2,030 and 4. Elsewhere it's written that the ben Benjamites, they, they were left-handed. They could throw, hurl stones and be spears. They're fierce. They're a mighty group of, of together of warriors. And the sons of Becker, Zimariah, and Joash, Eliezer, Elnaniah, and Amri, Jeremoth, and Abiah, and enough. Let's go back to chapter 6, verse 60. Chapter 6, verse 60, Ananah. And this was the tribe. Remember, these are the tribe cities. Out of the tribe of Benjamin, Geba with her suburbs, and Elamath with her suburbs, and Ananoth with her suburbs. So Ananoth is a city that's given to the priest, Jeremiah 1, who was a priest. And he lived in Ananoth. In the sons of Benjamin, verse 8, that's not the city, that's the man. And this is probably the man where this city was named for. And they've done that. We do that. Washington State, Washington City, Washington Street are primary much named for George Washington. Washington, D.C., which is funny because I know a guy who went out and did, you know, 
trivia out people in California, you know, what was our, our capital name for? No one knew it was George Washington. So there are places and people in the Bible where the cities are named for the people. And since you got a place called Ananoth and you got a a name in Benjamin and Ananoth is in Benjamin, I will safely assume that that's the man who named, who has something to do with that area. Again, that's Jeremiah chapter 1. That's where Jeremiah lived. And Almeth, and all these are the sons of Beecher. And a number of them, after their genealogy, by their generations, heads of the house of their fathers, mighty men of valor, was 20,200. And this, this is that census that David sent Joab to do. And there's one thing that Joab did was when he numbered the people, he numbered the warriors. Remember, Joab did it half-heartedly. He was not for David in this census. And when you go back and read that, we see now, he only, he only numbered his troops. Verse 10, And the sons of Jediel, Bilhan, the sons of Bilhan, Jeish, and Benjamin, named them for the family, and Ehud, and Chenaniah, and Zehem, and Tharsis, and Ahishabah. All these sons of Jediel, by the heads of their fathers, mighty men of valor, were 17,200 soldiers fit to go out for war and battle. So they were willing and able and fit for military service. Shupim also in Hupim, the children of Ar, 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 Hushim, and the sons of Ahir. The sons of Nephtali, that's of Bilha. Genesis 30, verse 8. His name means wrestling. <laughs> I am wrestling with my with my sister, and now Jacob will love me more. And that's one of the handmaids. And the sons of Nephtali, Jezheel, Gunai, Jezer, Shalom, the sons of Bilhah, the sons of Manasseh. Oops. Wow, he got a big family, didn't he? Verse 13. Look what the Lord says about Naphtali. <laughs> what is it? One, two, three, four, four sons. And then his wife and who he was. I mean, the mother and who he was. Verse 14, the sons of Manasseh. This is of Joseph and uh, Azaniah. That's the, the daughter of the priest in Egypt. This is the Gentile bride of Joseph. The sons of Manasseh. Asriel, whom she bare, parentheses, which is important, but his concubine, the Amorites, bare Micah, the father of Gilead, and Micah took to wife the sister of Huffin and Shelfin. Run that verse to 12. Manasseh goes into the tribe of Benjamin and marries into the tribe of Benjamin, which is forbidden by the law. Whose sister's name is Micah, Micaiah, and the parentheses. So that parentheses here is, you guys did what you weren't supposed to do. And there are, in the Bible, there are discrimination of marriage in the Bible. And the name of the second was Zohephed, and Zohephed had daughters. And no sons, just daughters, and that doesn't bring a family name on. When a white, when a when a daughter marries, she takes her husband's name. And Micaiah, the wife of Micur, bare the son and called his name Pirish. The name of his brother was Shirish. And the sons were Elam and Rechem. And the sons of Elam, Bedam, these were the sons of Gilead, the son of Micur, the son of Manasseh, and his sister. Hamalakath, bear Ishdod, and Ebezer, and Mahala. And the sons of Shemediah were Ahian, Shechem, Lukehai, and Anamiah. Anama? Anami? Let me just go through this list. Your tongue starts getting tired. Verse 20. The sons of Ephraim. This is the other son of Joseph and Atheris. 
He had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, in Egypt. These would be Hebrew, Egyptian children. And the sons of Ephraim, Shetuliah and Barad the son, and Tahath his son, and Elda his son, and Tathith his son, and Zabat his son, and Shulav his son, Ezer, and Elid, whom the men of Gath, that's a city, that were born in the land slew. Now Gath is in the Philistine area because they came down to take away their cattle. So here's the sons of Ephraim. They're coming to the city or town of Gath. They're going to steal cattle and the men of Gath killed them. <laughs> Look at that little... Isn't Chronicles boring? There's nothing but names. Well, we learned that Ephraim had a cowboy movie. They were going to go steal cattle of other cowboys and in their stand of doing it they were killed man they make fortunes on western movies doing that and here it is in the pages of the bible and ephraim their father mourned many days almost like jacob mourned for his sons and his brethren came to comfort him just like when they brought the word of joseph to jacob and, you know, is this his coat <laughs> imagine the sons trying to cheer jacob and when they knew his son was alive and when he went into his wife, she conceived and bare the son and called his name Beriah because it was evil with his house. <laughs> well, that's a nice name. Dad, why did you call me Beriah? Because it was just evil. All right. When you were born, it was just evil. And when I said we go back to Genesis chapter 30 and look how those names of the boys have been named. <laughs> Ephraim was named in Egypt. After his brothers sold Joseph, the names had particular meanings. And a lot of times they were named eight days after they were born, especially the males. When they were circumcised, then they were given the name. And verse 24, parenthesis, and his daughter was Shariah, who built Beth Horon, that's a town, the neither and the upper Uzin Sarah. And the parenthesis. God wants to know that this female built two cities, three or four, if you want to count the upper and the neither. Something to that. Caleb's daughter come to us and Father, here's here's the land you give me. Sure, yes, my dear. What else? Can I have the upper and the neither springs? Listen, in this area of climate, you have to survive around water. If there's no water, you don't have a city. And Repha, his son, and Rish, Hef, and Tela, his son, and Tena, his son. Laden and his son, Amenahut, his son, Elishama, his son, Nun, his son, Jehoshua, his son, and the pussy went, oh, oh, stop, stop, put the brakes on, verse 27. Important important and you would miss that if you didn't study the bible because not his son and just his son if you don't study the bible you're going to miss it so let's study the bible let's take numbers 13 verse 8 number 13 verse 8 because that's an important name in the bible Number 13 plus 8. And 8. Verse 8. Plus 8. Numbers chapter 13 verse 8. And we're going to run into a little trouble here. But let's look at. Of the tribe of Ephraim. Is that not who we're studying right now? Verse 20. The sons of Ephraim. Oh okay. So there we are. Oshia. The son of Nun. Or Nun. Okay, we have a difference in spelling between Numbers and Chronicles, but there's Ephraim and there's none, there's none. But we have a Jehoshua and we have an Ashia. We got troubles and problems here. Let's go to Numbers 1128. 
Numbers 11.28. Numbers 11.28. And Joshua, the son of Nun, a servant of Moses. There's that Nun again. Okay, we got Nun, Nun, Nun. We got Joshua. We got Osea. We got Jehoshua. We got a problem. We don't study. Because we got a problem if we just read our Bible and say, look, we're done, and you missed that name. Exodus 17, 9. It would be great if God did put it all in one big spot, but then you wouldn't be looking for it, would you? Exodus 17, 9. And this is the first time Joshua shows up. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us out men and go out and fight with the men. This is the servant of Moses. So what you have here, you have a man that has three names. Who is the son of none? He's Jehoshua, he's Joshua, he's Hosea. Joshua means Jehovah is Savior. Jesus means Jehovah saved. And you got a problem in the Bible. When you go to Acts chapter 7 and they replace Acts chapter 7 verse 40 something. Acts chapter 7. Huh? 745. 745. We got another problem with this man's name. In Acts 7.45, we've got a problem with this one man. Which also our fathers, have we not saw that fathers in what we've been reading? That came after brought in with Jesus into the possessions of the Gentiles. Now to tell you this right off, we're, we're not going to look at the entire book of Joshua, but the entire book of Joshua is where the Jewish people came into the land. How dare Stephen get it messed up? That he said Jesus. And yet Hebrews 4 8. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8. Whoever the writer of Hebrews is, and we don't know, we can speculate, but. Hebrews 4, chapter 8, written to <coughs> Hebrews. That took a lot of nuggets, didn't it? For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? The Bible says that Joshua brought them into the promised land, and yet the New Testament records Jesus Christ. The promised, the promised land of all the promised lands Joshua didn't give them rest. Ever since they entered into Jericho and unto David and unto Saul had peace, but unto the rest of the kings, when we went through first and second kings, and as we're going to become the chronicles, there's wars with the Philistines, there's war with the Ammonites, there's wars with the Syrians, there's wars with the Babylonians, they're going to captivity, they go into captivity. That rest has not come to Joshua yet. That rest is a prophecy rest that when Jesus Christ takes the throne. And the Jews are in their land by the land lots given to them. Yes, Joshua brought them in the land, but when Stephen and the writer of Hebrews said, there is yet a better rest coming. There is coming a time for people to say God's all finished with the Jews, which is sorry to say because he's not. There is coming a time for the Jews in the future. In the eternity future where there's no more time, they will have that complete, absolute peace. And there will be no one against them ever. So in verse 27 of 1 Chronicles 7, that's Joshua of the book of Joshua. That's Joshua who is the right hand of Moses. That's Joshua when he comes down from the mountain. Moses, I, I, I hear a battle. And Moses like, no, I hear singing. 
and they're walking down the mountain together. So what was it like up there? Oh, man, God, this is a wonderful job. Where are we going? Are you sure you think that's singing, Moses? That sounds like they're just... It sounds like a vacation Bible. No, 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 man. It sounds like they're, they're singing. Uh, okay, Moses. And listen, I mean, you're the right hand of God, but to me it sounds like I need to get my sword. I mean, they're coming down from that mountain. An entire nation of Israel is sinning with that calf, but two men, Moses and Joshua. Aaron made that calf. And to the death of the lawgiver, Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Boom. That's it. The law is finished. That's the law book. You have Joshua. And Joshua is the book where they go into that land of wrath. Where churches say, religions say, God's all finished with them. Then erase Joshua out of your Bible. But there he is. There's his father. The only nun you have in the Bible is Joshua's father. That's it. That's the only nun. And here it's spelled N-O-N. -N. So there he is. Verse 28. And their possessions and habitation for Bethel. Well, you know what that is. Now you know where Ethereum was. You know where he's located. If you don't look on a map, you can find Bethel. That's where Jacob fled from his brother, laid down. Had rocks as a pillar, and the Lord met him. And there's the angels going up and down. And for God said, okay, you're all done with Laban. Go back to Bethel. There it is. Who has that? Ephraim has that. And that's the son of Joseph and a Gentile wife. Bethel. And the towns thereof, and eastward, Nara, and westward, Gezer, and the towns thereof. These are all cities. And Shechem. And also the towns thereof in Gaza. Well, we know where that is. Well, guess where Ephraim is? You can find Gaza on any map, and any Bethel on any map. And the towns thereof, and by the borders of the children of Manasseh. So Ephraim and Manasseh, his brothers, share a border together. Beth Sheen, a city, and her towns. Tanakh and her towns. Megiddo, Revelation 16, 16. Revelation 16, 16. Megiddo. That sounds familiar. And you get a position in the Bible by reading Chronicles. Revelation 16, 16. This is the sixth vial. I don't know how many songs we've done so far. <laughs> I didn't count that. In Revelation 16, we all love Revelation, don't we? But we don't we don't all love First Chronicles. And he gathered them together unto a place in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Megiddon. That's the only time Armageddon shows up in the Bible. Where is that place? Here it is, Megiddo. And it's in Ephraim's territory. Joseph and the wife, a Gentile wife. And her towns. Now, Dor, and I tried to find, I, I couldn't, there's an Endor, where, the witch of Endor, and here is Dor. And I've looked at everything, I, could, I can't tell if they're the same or not. But here it says Dor, and her towns. And these dwelt the children of Joseph, the son of Israel. The sons of Asher, and his, his mother is Ziphah, Genesis 30, verse 13. He's a great guy to know, because Ziphah, well, Leah said, giving Ziphah for the proxy, oh, how happy I'm going to be. The daughters of Israel will call me blessed. And Asher would be, if you forget what the name blessed means, it means Asher, happy or blessed. Imnaya, Inusha, Ushiai, Bara, Sarai, Sarah, their sister. The sons of Benai, Heber, and Machiel, whose father was Barzephus. 
And Heber begat Jetheth and Shomer and Hotham and Shua, their sister. Now this one keeps mentioning sisters. When we deal with Asher, there's a lot of sisters and daughters. You didn't see many of that in Judah. And the sons, uh, I mean, verse 34, and the sons of Shemar, Ahai, and Rogah, Jehabath, Amram. Well, that's their great, 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 great grandfather. Amram and Jochebed, who buried Moses, Aaron, and uh, Miriam. That's in their family. May not be their great, great grandfather, but it's in that name. And the sons of his brother Helam, Sopha, Imna, Shelish, Amaya. And the sons of Sopha, Shua, and Hart, Fefer, Shunal, and Berai, and Imra. Bezer, and Had, and Shema, and Shilsha, and Ithram, and Bera. Beer in the Bible means water. Doesn't mean the alcoholic beverage. And you wonder why they would call the alcoholic beverage beer. You know how much it, water it takes to make a can of beer? Look that up sometime. It's ridiculous. Oh, there are people who are thirsting for good, clean water. Well, turn off the breweries and give that <coughs> give that water to those who don't have water. Look that up sometime, how much water is wasted for beer. And the sons of Jethir and Jephano and Pispa and Ara, the sons of Eula, Ara and Haniel and Reza. All these were the children of Asher, heads of the father's house, choice and mighty men. Look, look how they're fit in this chapter. I would think this chapter divides them by mighty men, men of valor, chief of the princes. Ooh, royalty. And the number throughout the genealogy of them that were at to war, able to go to war, and to battle were 20 and 6,000 men. And then we'll, we'll close right there with that, that tribe. And then we're going to pick up with Benjamin again for some. But we'll study that Lord another night, Lord willing.